<laughs> Unforgettable experience. Pretty easy to describe as probably the best um, sporting moment of my life. Unbelievable. And it feels like a dream. I think looking back, it was probably one of the best experiences of my life. You know, we had the, the qualifiers um, and the match against Peru. Then basically once that game finished, I didn't put my boots on or, or kick a ball until a week out from the A-League season. So, you know, some stressful moments along the way, um, thinking, you know, would I miss out on this opportunity? So, you know, it was definitely a stressful time, but which made the whole tournament um, even better for me. It was such a unique, pathway for, for us and for myself individually having you know, one of the probably the toughest period of my career going you know 10 months without football um, and then being able to find our way back into those playoff games uh, in June before the World Cup put us really were, were a catalyst for, for pushing us into the, the way we performed in Qatar. There's obviously all the qualifying games the Obviously, two years with the COVID and, and not coming back to show you to play. I think we played 16 or 14, whatever games it was, out, out of the country. And then to go 120 minutes, yeah, um, and then obviously penalties. It was, it was so nervous watching them, so I can't imagine what they were like, you know, on the, on the halfway line, the penalties. And just to feel part of it, even though I was still out injured, um, was amazing. Still surreal, eh? I've been obviously back in camp now. You, you reminisce with a few of the boys and um, just how crazy of an experience it was. That yeah, first of all that phone call when Arnie sent me a text saying, "Can I give you a call in 20 minutes?" And I remember I was just by my phone at home in Edinburgh and um, just sitting on my own. And you know, when he when he broke the news, I think um, I don't don't like to cry much, but I think if there's ever a reason, that's that's probably one um, achieving a, a childhood dream. Yeah, it was just such a special moment. So I was, um, it was unreal, you know, walking into the, the facility, it felt like home, you know, there was a lot of banners, there was, um, you know, pictures and uh, old photos of, of former Socceroos uh, players. I think it helped us to, to prepare and, um, you know, to get ready for the games. You know, the first game, you're coming up against the defending world champions. We've got a lot of younger players who have never played at this level before. A lot of guys who don't even, didn't even have a, haven't got a whole lot of international experience. And to go into that game, first up, I think, was probably the baptism of fire that we needed. We knew what we were up against. The French, they're, they're a really strong team. Uh, but, you know, we, we still had belief and, you know, we, we were together. Everyone knows the style, everyone's been around Arnie and knows what, what he wants from the team. We started really well to be honest, exactly how um, the coaching staff set us out is exactly what happened in, the, in the, the start of the game. They didn't press us much which was good because it gave us time to settle into the game and, and I thought the boys that played were unreal and um, the goal was class. I think it was maybe nine, ten minutes into the game. I can't really remember, to be honest, because it was a bit of a blur, but Harry had the ball and he did a big switch out to Leckie. He had a great first touch um, past his man and, and whipped it across the face. But as the play was happening, i just seen it kind of unfolding and tried to get into the, the back post. And you know the ball came across bouncing and I just tried to, to guide it on target. An incredible moment when the, when the ball hit the net and obviously just the emotion that, that comes out. It's not just the emotion of that moment, it's everything that kind of has led to that moment. An unreal moment um, when, when Goody scored and uh, you could see you know, the celebrations on the bench and you know, the fans and the family behind us. Um, you know, they, were, they were so, so happy and you know, overjoyed and you know, it, was, it, was, it kind of felt like a dream. Mate, it was it was mental. I went crazy on the bench, and I remember you know five minutes went by and we were still winning one nil. We were thinking on the bench like, oh, actually we can do this, like because you believe you're going to win and you really do believe it. And you know the the staff and the players here they they really drive into you that 
you, you have to believe, and we, we did believe we were going to win. But then when you actually are, is is phenomenal. And um, yeah, obviously the the result wasn't great at the end, but it just gave us that that push to know that we, we can really do this. The key message was that we've got to learn from kind of the mistakes that we made in the in the first game and and make sure we don't make them again. It was it was a great learning curve for the lads, um, and I think really showed that obviously in the rest of the tournament. For me, it was the two days before the Tunisia game was the most intense period of any Socceroos camp I've ever been in. Talk about that France game being the perfect opener. Those two days before Tunisia, you know it's all on the line. We knew that it was definitely going to be a, a fight. You know, we watched, you know, all the boys watched pretty much every game at the World Cup. So we saw the, the Tunisia game and, and we saw how physical they were with Denmark and the way they would fly into tackles. and and try and impose themselves um, in the game. So, you know, absolutely we were, we were ready and, and up for the fight. Graham Arnold approached everything so well, I think, the way he spun the France game to make sure we didn't lose confidence because, you know, it was, it was a big loss at the end of the game. But he spun it to be like, you know, we did play the former champions. We took it to them in the first 30 minutes. We can use that as like our own kind of friendly match, even though it was obviously a competitive match in the tournament. I think it was a real kind of team spirit of performance. Um, we knew that they'd make it more of a home game for them with the with the, the crowd and the the way the crowd were and you know jeering every touch that we had and making it as hostile as we they could for us but I think we coped with it really well. It was the perfect opponent, the perfect time. Um, to, for me, the way I play my game, it was absolutely ideal. Fiery, intense, physical, um, everything I love about football and passionate. Um, the atmosphere was incredible. Craig Goodwin takes a deflection oh. on target. And the header from Mitch Duke. Australia have the advantage. And Mitch Duke becomes the Socceroos' eighth individual goal scorer in a World for Cup Finals match. When Duke got that flick on and, um, you know, it went in the back of the net, you know, you could see all the players run out and you know, the celebrations were wild and um, it was a, a wonderful feeling. I uh, can't, can't really put it into, into words. After the France game, actually, we got time with the families um, at a shopping centre in Qatar and I remember speaking to my son and we were talking about my goal celebration that I wanted to, like, we wanted to share in that moment. At some point, I, he told me the goal celebration. I said, I was like, I'll definitely make sure I score a goal at some point during the tournament. Uh, definitely wouldn't have figured it to be the next game and you know that was also probably one of my highlights of my career and one of the most special moments especially from the World Cup. And that's an awkward attempt at clearance, opens the path here for Tunisia. Oh what a tackle, what a tackle. Big H, um, you know when he made that challenge it was, um, it was unreal. Uh, you saw the, the whole bench just stand up and you know was so happy, you know he played a big part in, in in history. Watching it back when I made the tackle, there was already five of our lads in the box to try to defend the situation and there was, there was none of their players. So five of our lads have sprinted back to try and help out the situation. So if I wasn't there, I think it was Aziz, Kai got back, Jack Ode went to the back, Azar, um, Milos or Fran. Um, so yeah, I think that kind of whole kind of five second clip sums up the culture and what we identify as as a squad. There's not many moments in football where a, a, a tackle can be as memorable as a goal and that's one of them. I thought that whole game we were, we just show what Aussies are all about, um, you know, fighting for every ball and, and even when things weren't going our way we just showed that side of us that you know, all Aussies um, have and that is just determination and and the will to just win every moment and um, you know winning that game was was such a special feeling within the group and you know we, we took confidence from the France game and, and, and we ended up losing but then to go on and win the next game just gives you that you know that little bit more confidence and and push to know even though we knew before that we could do it but now we, we were one step away from actually getting out of the group. There it is it's Australia's third win in a World Cup Finals match, a win of enormous courage and commitment. And it keeps them alive at the 2022 FIFA World Cup.
probably a more kind of back to the wall performance in the Tunisia game so I still felt that we had a little bit of the ball in the Tunisia game and made chances. Um, going into the Denmark game we knew that we could create history and go through for the second time ever and we knew all the support we had after seeing all the fan parks and stuff after the Tunisia game we knew how many people would be watching and, and supporting us and backing on us but we felt that we had that team spirit and culture that, that they maybe never had and yeah again they probably started the better side um, creating a few chances, Matty again making a few saves. There's Jensen offside, he shoots near post and uh, Matt Ryan was not waiting for any flag. There's not many games in your career where you feel like, you know, this is our day today and every every minute of that game, as the game, the longer the game went on, I was like, this is our day, like we're, we're going to win this game. And a break here for Riley McGree. It's on for Matthew Leckie. Matthew Leckie cuts back inside. One way, then the other. And he scores for Australia. Matthew Leckie embraces the moment for the Socceroos. When Leckie went on that run and Riley played a, a really good pass to him. And then chops inside, chops outside, chops back inside. And then it just felt, it felt like forever the ball was, was travelling into the net. When Leckie scored, we all sprinted, probably hit the highest sprint speed we've had um, to, to run down and celebrate with him, which is uh, an incredible, incredible moment. And it was funny as well because during um, probably two minutes before, the bench had just heard that Tunisia had scored against France and were leading. Uh, thankfully, we didn't get told anything kind of during the game. Uh, we just knew we, get, we, we would give ourselves the best chance as long as we win. When that full-time whistle went, mate, it was just... Yeah, just the feeling that you've just achieved something so big that you've dreamt as as, as as a little kid, obviously, to win a World Cup game, but to actually get through the group. Yeah, it's just an incredible, incredible feeling. Yeah. And there it is! Can you believe it? Written off too many times to remember. Australia has found a way, found its way to the Elite 16 of world football. The country can keep on dreaming. When you think of Argentina, you think about Messi, um, you know, one of the best footballers in the world, and you just don't know what to expect. Just the aura around him, like every time he, he touches the ball or, you know, goes near the ball, it's just, just that the crowd just went mental. We started really well again the first 25 minutes, thought we were the better side. Um, created a few kind of half chances, a lot of possession, looked comfortable in the game, and then obviously Messi goes in. Scores. Messi! And he scores for Argentina. We were always in the game. I think that was the message at half time. It was stay in the game, stay in the game. You're always going to get a chance. You're always going to get an opportunity. Alvarez! Oh, that's a horror moment for Australia. And obviously the game got stretched and then we go 2 0 down and it's like, well, we've got kind of 15, 20 minutes. What is there to lose? Let's just go for it. And coming off the bench, you have to change your mindset to be able to to adapt to, to what the game requires. And, you know, coming on, we were 2-0 down and it was trying to, to make a difference, trying to, to provide something. And I think the last 20 minutes, we had to throw numbers forward and, and we did concede a couple of chances um, for them on the break, but we certainly created a lot more. And that's a good ball forward. And the shot oh, from Goodwin! Oh. It's in for Australia! Craig Goodwin scores his second goal at the World Cup Finals and there's still hope. I think Arnie changed the system a bit and uh, Big H went up front. <laughs> so we, we, we sort of knew you know, what to expect. Just absolute 100 mile an hour, just giving everything we've got. And I think, obviously, we take it right to the, to the very last kick of the ball. Craig Goodwin clips it forward. Garan Kual on the angle. And that was the opportunity. It hits off his arm and bounces back and then he catches it and then I think you see from their celebrations of all them piling around the keeper how close they knew that they were in a game and how close they were to conceding. To say that we even had those chances at the end of the game to potentially have made it 2-2 um, in such a big game of what it was um, and I think I actually seen quotes from the coach saying I think Australia was the hardest game to prepare for in their World Cup campaign so like I think we can take massive pride out of that kind of statement from their coach um, and to really earn the respect of them, the footballing world, and I think we felt that from all the Australian fans anyway. Everyone was so disappointed, you know, when the game finished, like I said, everyone was shattered that we hadn't won, so we just went and consoled all the boys to, 
you know, because obviously we're out. Um, and then I've, I've, you know, just made sure everyone was all right, you know, and then shook Messi's hand and, and just asked him because no, I'd, ever, all the other boys I'd seen shake his hand and no one, no one had from what I saw. So I just chanced my, chanced my luck and, um, you know, he said, I'll get you inside and, um, and that's what happened. So yeah, pretty, pretty cool experience, but wasn't like, I wasn't planned or anything. It was just kind of in the moment or just, just ask him because, you know, you don't know how often you're going to get a chance to come up against him and um, yeah, so obviously pretty lucky now, but um, no, that was pretty cool. The World Cup, unfortunately for Australia, is over. And every player in qualifying and the World Cup final squad, congratulations. This performance certainly has opened a window of hope, desire and possibilities. I think looking back, I think it was probably one of the best experiences of my life um, so far. Just so much mixed emotions with all highs, lows, uh, euphoric moments, you know, disappointing moments. Um, but I think when you look back at it, you, we've got to be so proud as a group. Um, what we managed to achieve. We saw videos uh, back home and you know the reception that we were getting uh, you know here all the support and the love from the fans um, was really really unbelievable and you know I think it was good that um, you know the fans came out and it felt like the nation was was right behind us um, and you know going that far uh, I feel like you know it's it's going to improve the football in this in this country and hopefully, um, you know, the betterment of the game. To be able to say that we scored in every match that we played in, you know, against former world champions with France, you know, to go 1-0 up, I think was like massive. That was like almost like a shock to the system a little bit um, with how early we scored against them and things like that. That was like just a bit of a crazy experience and just also like even crazy feeling, adrenaline. Um, and then, yeah, just kind of like drove that the rest of the campaign against all the other teams you know went uh one one nil against tunisia one nil against denmark and then you know we put it to the current champions now argentina it's just the every game had their own little moments of like feeling like special and so, something that we did was just like i think shock to the world so uh, it was very very special in each game